Robert Dior, and you just heard solo number three from the Mitchell Peters book, Advanced Snare Drum Studies. That's the blue book. So this solo is great for developing short rolls. It starts in 6-8, and the eighth note remains the same, moves to 2-4, and then back to 6-8. But it has lots and lots of short roll passages, so this gives us an opportunity to talk about this. So my concept, and many uh, players' concepts, for orchestral roles is to have an underlying bass rhythm. So in other words, if the tempo is this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you're gonna have a snare drum rhythm that underlies those roles. So in this case, it would be the 16th note. So let me show you. One, two, three, one, two, three. So there I'm playing buzzes on each one of those sixteenths. That doesn't sound very good, but when you speed it up and you get it even, it sounds great. So that should be your concept for all of your rolls, but especially the short rolls. So in this etude, we have this passage that starts at 2-4 and goes all the way to the top of the next page, especially the last line of page one. So let's play that for you slowly so you can see my concept. So we'll put the metronome on 60 and we'll start out with playing 16th notes and then I'm going to buzz these. It's not going to sound perfectly even because we're way under tempo and if I was going to do it at this tempo I would probably use a uh, 16th note triplet pulse but we'll try it just with 16th. Okay, now when you speed it up to tempo, which is 80, once again, that's the eighth note, uh, this is what you get. One, two, one, two. So all of those are 16th note based. And once again, it depends on your tempo. If you're faster, you might want to do it as a triplet bass roll. So in other words, so all your rolls should have that concept. A good uh, way to work on this is with the uh, Joe Mor Morello book, Master Studies. Uh, that section on buzz rolls, that's volume one, works great. Also in my book, I have several rhythms that work well with this, where you're actually playing the 16th notes and then buzzing the rhythm. So it's an underlying pulse and you're doing buzzes on all of those. Now, uh, the head I'm using is a calf head today. That's what I prefer on my snare drums. That makes it a little more difficult sometimes to roll because it sucks you in. So you got to relax even more. Another uh, option or a, an option for that would be a diplomat uh, uh, thickness head, very thin. That's what uh, I normally use if I use plastic, is I'll use a diplomat, uh, it could be Evans. Uh, diplomat is a Remo head, but Evans makes a strata, which is about the same thickness, depending on you know which type you get. So the thinner the head, the better. And uh, calf works really good for that particular thing. It's just a different feel, so you gotta get used to that feel, all right? Now, in this um, etude, one thing you have to remember is it's written as dotted quarter equals 80. So one way to get that on your metronome is just to put the quarter note on 80 and then use the triplet subdivision, and that becomes the eighth note, and that eighth note stays the same throughout the etude. Now this etude also has a lot of really soft playing, and I've talked about that in several of my other videos, but uh, this has a soft section 
which is kind of like, uh, you know, Ravel, the composer. Ravel wrote a lot of stuff like this for snare drum, which is really soft in triplets. So that starts on the fourth stanza of page two. So let me just play a little of that for you. One, two, three, one, two, three. So one thing to remember when you're playing these kinds of passages, and I said this in a previous video, I think it was my singles video that I did on etude number two, the Peter's etude number two, is that when you get softer or louder, your tempo cannot change. It's common, I see that with my students, and even sometimes professional players, when they're playing and they try to play loud, they'll rush. When they go softer, they'll drag. Don't do that. That's a deadly thing, and conductors will not like you for it, especially since you're in back of the orchestra. So uh, that wraps up this one, and like I said, I'll be doing pretty much all of these eventually, all of these etudes. So I hope you enjoyed this, and keep sending me all those great emails. Thanks.